need my police file. This can get me my retrial. You got one shot, you're gonna need more. Why is my case so important? They did the same thing to you, they did to me. Why are you doing this? This isn't personal. It feels personal to me. What's happening, peeps? We're back to review the second episode of For Life, 50 Cent's new show. This episode was good. It wasn't as good as the first one, but it was still a pretty compelling episode. You know the impact that this show is not gonna be what it would be if it was on like Stars, HBO, but that still doesn't mean that it can't be good. I enjoyed it and we're gonna talk about it right now. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to hit me on Instagram with any stories you want me to cover, any of the shows you guys are watching or movies so I can review it, give you the credit, bring it up here on YouTube, and also download the podcast. So ladies and gentlemen, this show, episode two, puts our man Aaron, a superhero who acts like Denzel Washington, walks with a forward lean, has gotten his law degree in jail, and is trying to get his freedom. But in order to get his freedom, He's having to do all these court cases. And so last week, he had to get a favor from Nazis in prison, all right? He gets that favor from them, now it's time to pay up. And they have a guy in, in there named Joey that they want to get out of that particular building. And so this episode starts out with Aaron talking to the warden about um, being able to take on this guy's case because he attacked uh, CO unprovoked and he feels like there's something behind it. And plus he's gotta repay his debt to the white supremacy crew and get him out of there. So he makes a deal with the warden. All at the same time, he's also trying to get his case filed that he feel like the NYPD messed up in his case to try to rectify that situation. And the warden and him have trust. The issue with him and the warden is the warden's girl, I mean wife, is running against Maskins, who is the current district attorney. And they wanna keep things private. They don't wanna look like there's any collusion with an inmate who's representing the other inmates as an attorney and the warden. But you know, some of these things are just gonna look like the warden is helping, but the warden and her wife are good people and they want to see Aaron Wallace get his freedom and help others. So the warden trusts Aaron Wallace to do this, keep it discreet, not bring in the press, and Aaron even says he's gonna move it over to another county, all right? And within that melee, you have Aaron's ex-wife and mother of his kid, and you have Aaron's daughter who is pregnant. You have her baby daddy wanting to go and talk to Aaron in jail to put eyes on him so that, you know, as a father, be like, bro, you gonna take care of my kid, my daughter's kid? I don't want you to be one of these dudes that's just gonna come in, run, and not take care of responsibility. So he goes up there, takes the ride, meets with Aaron, talks to him, let him know, you know, I'm gonna do the best I can, I'm gonna take care of your daughter. Um, they had a long talk about, you know, she's not motivated, she's not doing a whole lot, and the father kind of feels like he's the influence there. And he just really gives him a pep talk about, you do the right thing, you lead her in the right direction. Then they get right back into the story of what's going on with Joey, the Nazi sympathizer, and why he was locked up. They have footage that the warden allows Aaron to see. And that footage shows before, he, before um, Joey beat up the CO, he was whispering to the black CO, hey man, I need help, I'm scared, whatever, whatever. And the black CEO just basically ignored him, went away. And I'm like, damn, dude. And But if you're black, what you, what you think you're gonna do? You've got someone in there who's got a Nazi symbol on their body, basically telling you I hate anything that's not Aryan nation. And the black dude turned a blind eye, went away. And Aaron is caught in a rug, he's caught between a rock and a hard place because while he's trying to pay his debt back to the Aryan nation that helped him, you know, his black brothers is looking at him like, bro, what the hell is wrong with you? We got cases that you haven't even helped us solve, but you helping these guys. And of course, Aaron can't drop the dime of why he's helping the Aryan Nation because it helped him with his last case to win. So long story short, Aaron is able to look at the document, look at the footage. He's able to go and talk to Joey. He's able to talk to Joey's um, cellmate at the time and finds out that Joey has syphilis, his cellmate has syphilis, his cellmate was Chinese, they smashed, 
and the Aryan nation found out and was gonna beat the hell out of Joey and that's what caused Joey to want to leave. But one insight I think y'all might have missed, the leader of the Aryan Nation, I think, also had a relationship with Joey. And when he found out Joey was smashing the Chinese dude, on top of cheating on him, you're smashing someone that's outside the Aryan Nation, he got mad, and that's another reason why they wanted him gone. And at the very end, they had a little in-house trial in the, in the jailhouse, Aaron was able to get the black officer not on the witness stand because this wasn't the witness stand. This was just a little in-house jail summonsing. And the black dude basically admitted he turned a blind eye. He didn't do his paperwork. He didn't respond when Joey said he was afraid he needed help. And through that, um, Aaron was able to get Joey, move somewhere where he can be safe. And he also called Joey's roommate, the Chinese guy to the stand, who corroborated that they had a sexual relationship, which is why they both had syphilis. And again, Aaron helped out the warden, the warden helped out, warden helped out Aaron, and now we're moving on. But the other twist in the story, at the very end, when Aaron went to court to try to get that case file from the NYPD to prove that there were some inaccuracies in that file, his daughter showed up. And you know, this was emotional for him because he loves his daughter. She's pregnant, carrying his grandchild, and he's trying to get out to be, for, be there for his family. And the district attorney is throwing every dirty trick in the book at Aaron to make sure he's not gonna get anywhere because it's gonna look really bad on that district attorney's office if they let this guy who got his attorney license in jail get out and move on. And they had some kind of collusion going on and the judge ruled that he could not get his file and his daughter was over there crying. They had a sentimental moment when the judge was looking at the daughter like, oh man, what did I just do? But Aaron and being in there for six, seven years, has grown a patience and he realizes that he tells his baby, I'm gonna get out. I will get out of here and I'm gonna be there to help you. But in the end, I don't know how I feel about the daughter's baby daddy calls, calls Aaron in prison and tells him that he is the downfall of everything going on with his daughter, not participating in school, not having a lot of hope in life. He's telling Aaron that his daughter takes a five hour drive each and every week dealing with him and that's causing her to go down and i kind of feel like the son got out of pocket in the way he was talking to the dad i mean hell bro even though he's in jail look at what this man has accomplished while he's been in jail he's got his law license he's won basically two cases and he's still fighting for his freedom and you out here talking to him like he ain't got no hope you out of pocket i kind of felt like the, the the baby daddy got out of pocket to Aaron, but you know they're gonna continue that story, and sooner or later, 50 Cent is gonna be involved, which is gonna add to the intrigue of this story. So I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not watching ABC's For Life, get on it. It is a very good story. It's based on true events. It's based on a real deal person who went through this, got his law license, and wound up getting his freedom. So at some point in time, the man is gonna get his freedom, it's just a matter of how much turmoil are they gonna put him through until he gets that freedom. Leave me all your comments on what you thought about this episode. Did you enjoy it? How did you feel about that? The baby daddy going at Aaron with so much venom in the end saying that he's the reason for all the hardship in his daughter's life. That's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Let me know what else you all are watching Download the podcast, and until that next sex is hell video, I'll see you.